Welcome in, I'm Artris, and in this video, we're gonna be going over probably the most unique uh, and shocking leader to come out of OPO6, and that is Yamato, which is a green and yellow leader that says double attack, yes, double attack, activate main once per turn. If your opponent has three or less life, attach up to two rested dawn to one of your characters. So off the bat, it feels like we're getting a little bit of power creep going on in this set with our leaders, um, Yamato being one of the strongest leaders to come out of a set in a while the double attack on a leader is insane to me especially coupled with some of the cards that come out in this set as well uh, but it has been the talk of the town with opo6 obviously gecko moria is probably the best leader to come out of the set but yamato is not far behind uh, with just how potent it really is Typically though, you're going to be playing this very much like brain off, go burr and swing at your opponent and try to rush them down before they can establish anything. You're basically asking for cards out of their hand. However, with this build, we're taking it uh, for a little bit of a different spin. And this is the Fortress build for Yamato. And the Fortress build, if you're familiar with OPO1, when uh, eight cost green kid was the menace of that meta, it basically plays around with eight cost Captain Kid. And so a lot of the early game, we're using our time to set up rather than swing into our opponent and take them down to low life. Uh, we're setting up either uh, for that eight cost kid to come down uh, by putting up blockers or just accumulating as many counters as we can as possible. So let's go over the deck list and explain a little bit about how Fortress Yamato works. So going over what we have first is four Ezo. This is pretty standard if you're running any kind of green. This is probably your best 2k counter. It is a on play rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less. So very handy if you are trying to go for game and they have one blocker left. Otherwise it is a 2k counter. We are running four killer, which this is a blocker and dawn times one on block. If you have three or more characters, draw one card. And so oftentimes you will have a board of blockers behind an eight cost captain kid or in front of rather, and using this ability to draw a card is very nice. Uh, and also it's a supernova, which can be found by Bonnie, which we'll get to later. Then the whole reason to play the deck is the eight cost Captain Kid. Uh, Dawn times one on the opponent's turn. If this character is rested, your opponent cannot attack anything other than characters named Eustace Captain Kid. So your opponent can only attack into this thing, basically making your leader an 8K leader. Uh, activate main once per turn is the second part of this. You may rest this character, play one character card with a cost of three or less from your hand. So oftentimes on your eight dawn turn, you can just throw this down, rest it, and then put a blocker out beside it just to establish uh, another blocker on the board in case you don't have that many already. One thing that has been a problem with playing the eight cost Captain Kid in the past, and one of the reasons why I think it fell off, is that it does need to be on the nine dawn turn or 10 dawn turn in order for it to uh, fully be able to use its ability, rest, put out a blocker, and then also put a dawn underneath uh, so that your opponent has to attack into it. And so that has been one kind of crucial misstep when playing with this. Oftentimes you would see this in like the green kid leader. Uh, and it just, you would have to play it a turn later uh, in order for it to be effective. With Yamato though, with the second half of the ability, being able to put up to two rested dawn uh, on one of your characters, you can actually play the eight cost captain kid on eight and then use the ability and then use the Yamato ability to put the Dawn underneath it, making your opponent attack into it. So you are able to get this effect off one turn sooner than you normally would uh, playing any other green leader which is probably why the Fortress build in Yamato is really powerful. Next, we're running three Viola, which this is a 2K counter, and it is only a 2K counter. Uh, it is a Don Quixote Pirates type, which is very important because we have Baby 5 to search out our 10 drop Doflamingo. This is the other bomb in the deck, so oftentimes your opponent is going to be spending a lot of time trying to attack into the kid, and when they are wasting their efforts by swinging a bunch of bodies, you can play the 10 drop and then suspend all of their characters and leader so that you're able to uh, then take back momentum the following turn and basically just uh, put that nail in the coffin that you've got the game won. Then we're running four of the Baby 5 2K counter. This is, once again, just a 2K counter. You wouldn't be using it for the effect. It's a searchable 2K counter off of the other Baby 5. Next, we're running four of the Don Quixote Rosinante. This is a blocker that came out of OPO5, and it says on your opponent's turn, 
If one of your other rested characters would be KO'd, you may trash this character instead. So you can use this to protect your eight cost kid if you're going against decks like Sakazuki or anything that will have good removal for the eight cost captain kid. Next we're running four of the baby five searcher. This is a one cost and you pay one, activate main, rest this character, look at the top five cards of your deck, reveal up to one card with the Don Quixote Pirates type and add it to your hand then place the remaining cards at the bottom of the deck in any order. So this will be able to search out the Viola, the Don Quixote Do Flamingo, the Baby 5 2K, the Don Quixote Rosanante, and also itself. So that's also the other good thing about this is that it can search for itself in case you didn't see anything else in your top five and this is the only thing. So uh, overall, there's over, I think, 20 targets for this. Um, which is pretty strong uh, if you're looking for something to search. Next, a card from OPO6. This is Hody Jones. It is a seven cost, 8K body, rush, and on play, rest up to a total of two of your opponent's characters and or Dawn. Then put the top of your life cards into your hand. This is probably one of the strongest cards to come out of the set and goes really well with Yamato. Being able to Play this down, rest some blockers, and then get in for lethal or either clear the board. Um, it really is a strong card, and the effect taking the top card of your life is not a problem. You're getting an extra card in hand, and especially if you have the eight cost Captain Kid out on the field, it doesn't matter because your opponent's gonna have to swing into the eight cost anyway, and you're getting an extra card to defend it with. So overall, Hody Jones, four of. It's not searchable, but um, you will come across it probably once. Then we're running four of the Jewelry Bonnie. This is an activate main, pay one, rest this card. It's the same exact thing as Baby Five, except it searches the top five for a supernova. So it can find itself, it can find the killer, it can find your eight cost Captain Kid. It finds your Scratch Mana Poo, which we'll get to right now. Uh, this is a 2K counter. And then it also finds your Punk Gibson, which is this is a counter event uh, that says, your leader or one of your characters gains plus 4,000 power during this battle, then rest one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less, and then the trigger is rest one of your opponent's characters. Very strong to get past blockers, especially if somebody is trying to swing into you. It is one less body for you to have to counter out of, or one less block that they have on the crackback. And then uh, after the Scratch Minipoo, we're running four of the Onami. This is another card from OPO6 that is super strong. It is an on play, give up to one of your leader or characters, banish for this turn. And then the triggers KO up to one of your opponent's characters with a five cost or less. So it can also remove blockers on the field. And on top of that, giving your leader banish, incredibly powerful. You could also give the 10 drop, the eight drop, the Hody Jones banish, whatever you like. Uh, it is a very strong card. Typically, I will hold on to this for late. The way that I think you should be playing this deck overall, you should be just picking at your opponent, clearing the board. It's a lot of setup. It's not the same thing as just swinging eight every turn at your opponent, hoping that they take all the damage. You're kind of hoping that they counter out so that by the time you get to the late game, they don't have a lot of counters. You can sit behind this eight cost Captain Kid and use your Onami to put it on your leader so that it has double attack banish. If you remember back to OPO2, there was a build that I believe was Kinemon and also the green starter deck Kid uh, where they played Fortress and they sat behind the eight cost Captain Kid, but instead of their leader having double attack and then the banish with Onami, the five cost Yamato was what they played instead. And so they sat behind and picked her at their opponent, double attack banish every turn until they whittled them down of resources, which incredibly powerful way to play. This deck though is, I will say you have to have some patience and it is a lot of setup. So uh, this one, you do have to take a little bit more time to think and be a little bit careful on how you are doing some of your attacks or what you can give up, how many lives you can take a turn. Well, you just have to consider that. So overall though, I think it's a very strong deck and, and probably contender for one of the top decks in the format. It does have some struggles against Sakazuki. Of course, black, uh, blue, being able to bottom deck or just remove things off the board, especially blockers. <laughs> and then of course, uh, your eight cost Captain Kid, your whole game plan. And if they get rid of that, then what do you do? Another deck that you might have problems with is Perona being able to rest your blockers is an issue, so you might not want to play out your blockers ahead of time like you would in most other matchups. So consider that. Some decks you will do well against will be Katakuri because, well, Katakuri can't do much against the Captain Kid unless they are running the eight cost Katakuri. Uh, Anel is also a deck that you might be able to do okay against, especially if you are uh, grinding them out of resources and then play down the 10 drop. The 10 drop is really crucial in that matchup. 
Uh, and then other matchups, you'll probably go even with, like Reiju is a pretty good one you would go even with. They do draw their entire deck, but uh, you are grinding them out of those resources as they're doing it. So, so let's take it into the sim and see how it does. And as always, if you find anything in this video useful or informative, please make sure to drop a like and a sub. It helps out the channel immensely, and I can't thank you enough for the support. Additionally, if you'd like to talk about the One Piece card game outside of the YouTube comments, make sure to join the Discord. The link is in the description below. We're going against a mirror matchup. I want to take second because I want to be able to uh, play the kid on curve. So this is really good. We do have a couple of Bonnies here, so I'm okay playing a Bonnie down on the first turn and just using it to search. This will basically act as a blocker in its own way we don't find anything off of that which really does hurt hopefully on the next search we can find uh maybe a 2k counter potentially i don't know another blocker we do have a killer we passed up <laughs> we, have, we passed up two of the rosinante blockers which does hurt us quite a lot so let's go here search again we'll grab the 2k instead of the punk gibson we don't really need the punk gibson here I'm gonna search, I'm gonna swing five and just ask for a card out of hand. They do take it, which that's fine. Um, they are playing, I think, the more aggro version here. So as long as we, wow, double Satori, that is pretty insane. Okay, uh, we'll throw it on a killer. They are running, they do have uh, not a lot of cards in hand. That is something to keep note of. And it's okay, I believe. Uh, I think it's okay here to, let's rest this one. I think it's okay here to take like a couple of hits. Taking that one hit's fine. Um, I want to say... Hmm. Do you think we just go for it? <laughs> what if we just go Burr? Uh, no, nah, I think we just go here. I think this is fine. We'll be able to, we'll have to watch out for the Yamato attack here. If they do have like a Nami to give them banished, then we are going to be in a bit of trouble. Uh, but ideally, we can get like a blocker out of here, maybe. Uh, hmm. I think we take it. I think we use it actually. I think we use it to get rid of the Satori just to be safe here. And then we're okay taking these. Yeah, this is great. Now that we have the killer, uh, looks good. Things are looking good. I think we can just go here. Go five at face. Wow. Take it. This is one where we actually might just be able to go huge. They have a Satori though. What do they get rid of? No. I think we just play it safe. Let's just do this. And then pass. They do have to put a uh, a lot of Dawn onto some stuff. And we do have a few a few counters here. This one, this game, I'm going to be honest, is a little strange. Uh, them running Gadatsu, I'm not quite sure, is standard here. Because if you think about it, usually you're going to be getting the opponent down to really low life totals. And having a Gadatsu doesn't really make much sense. I guess it does work against if you're dropping like two drop blockers. So this does seem a little abnormal. I could be wrong, though. Uh, and then, of course, them taking, like, the five feels really strange. So, yeah. The resting killer. Okay. They still have to put a lot of Dawn into this. Uh, okay. Do two 2Ks. And then I assume they're going to go eight here. And we'll give them a baby five. Yeah. And then we just go <laughs> all in. Actually, you know what we're going to do here? We're going to go here. I, I think the writing was on the wall. The efficient play is to play the, the blocker down so that you can use the rest at dawn and then put the rest on the kid. Although mathematically, I don't think they would have been able to counter out. Just out of curiosity though, if we played the Hody Jones the turn before, we would have swung seven. So we would have had, I think... I think we'd have been able to swing 11. Would they have been able to counter out? 7, 9, 10, 11, no. So we would have been able to win with the Hody Jones, but playing it safe, I advise most people to do that. So uh, yeah. On to the next. Hmm. All right, Red Purple Luffy is an interesting one. I am not entirely sure how this matchup goes. So let's 
try it out. Uh, let's put down the baby five first. And then I guess we'll search with the baby five, swing six. The good thing here is that they're already at three life, so our leader ability, no matter what, is already active. Pretty nice. Feels good. So I think the next turn will be at three dawn. We'll search with the baby five. We could set up a blocker. Is that the right play? I'm gonna be honest, like going against, they have so little resources. I'm just gonna swing eight because that's like a number they don't like. And I'm not gonna use my baby five quite yet. Yeah. This puts them in a, like a huge pressure onto them. Now that you could probably play Yamato like go Burr and not have to have like any of the fortress. I think part of the fun of the fortress is like you're setting up pieces. You're kind of draining some of their stuff. A bond clay is fine. It's not gonna do anything. Do they run? They don't run Red Hawk, do they? Woo! 10 drop. Let's go. Let's swing another 8. I'm going to put a blocker down this time, though. They just take it. It's fine. <laughs> Their bond clay isn't doing anything. It is a 1K. Or a 1,000 power body. Because I have 1,000 power bodies. So... Uh, they're at nine. Have they? Did they use their? Let's just let's just take it. That's fine. We'll be at seven next turn. Queen is interesting. That's fine. Queen's not gonna. Queens will just block here. So I think it might be better to just establish a couple of blockers. Maybe use our baby five as well. Could be an interesting. Interesting move there. I don't know why they dropped the Jambe. Maybe they have another one. Okay, let's go Bonnie. Found the kid. Found a Rosinante. I feel like these are going to go. So let's just put this down. And pass. And then throw the, we'll have the kid next turn. So this is actually pretty good for us. We'll be at nine. If one of these searchers, which it doesn't look like the searchers will, will survive. Uh, just let them go. What if we were cheeky? <laughs> and you know, they like they swing the bond clay at the baby five, right? And we just block with the killer. Okay. It's fine. Decent card, decent card. The problem though will be when the bond clay becomes a uh, 8K swinging at my kid, that's gonna be a problem. This just kind of prevents them from attacking into life. They have to swing into the baby five again, but it doesn't feel great, right? Swinging seven into one does not feel great. Uh, cancel, cancel, boom. Alrighty, now, play down the kid, rest him, I think we just go here, it doesn't, I mean, they'll probably block, that's fine, yeah. And then the following turn, we can throw down a 10 drop, which is pretty nice. They do have a lot of firepower on their side, though. That is something to be a little bit scared about, I suppose. As long as we play it correctly with as far as like our blocks go, I think we might be okay. A new gate. That's fine. It's not really doing too much for us. Or against us, rather. I think we'll just use the killer here. That's pretty good. Uh, cancel, cancel, and then they'll swing pretty heavy here, I imagine. Uh, 
Uh, now what do we do? Good question. What if we go here? Okay, that's pretty good. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Here, attack in. So now this is not getting any value. They'll be back at a six the next turn. The only thing they can really do here is pop one of the blockers. With this new gate. But then again, they might just go like extra turn. How long does this last? Next refresh phase. Uh, yeah, this might not be that good then against like a 10 drop Luffy. Cause then the refresh phase comes back up again. Oh, well, all the characters go away. I forget that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. What am I talking about? All their characters go away. <laughs> it's good. It's fine. Do we do it to him? I think we do it to him. Boom, boom, boom. So then that means like the only, ooh, another one, eh? Okay. Let's go, um, here? It's a lot of cards coming out of their hand. Here? We'll go 10 again. I think they have to block with the queen, right? Unless they have like an event. Okay. So the only attacker that they have is Bond Clay. Sorry, I'm like pausing at times because like this is a little bit intense based off of the Bond Clay coming down. Of course, Bond Clay is not a card that is in the meta. It's an EBO one. Uh, so we don't have to worry about it quite yet, but it is problematic. I think we're fine. They get a refresh phase. Oh, the refresh phase. Yeah, okay. They get a refresh phase. Basically, here's what happens is they're going to swing all in on the kid. I'm going to block with my Rosinante, and then they'll swing in with their Luffy. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll still use the Rosinante effect because it's pretty good. That's fine. And then what? I swing 20? Yeah. Swing 20. So oh. That was scary for a second. Uh, there, there's some moments where I was like, oh, I don't know if I can survive this. But yeah, I, I guess it worked out. I, I think Yamato overall, like the regular version, does really well against uh, Red Purple Luffy. The Fortress version, I think, is okay as well. Uh, typically, though, you're probably going to have better bets playing this against like a Katakuri. If there's a huge Katakuri spike in your meta. Gecko Moria, hmm. I think we'll go second. I think we'll go second, even though I really, really want to go first against Gecko Moria. We'll keep this hand, because we have a Bonnie. Uh, I'm going to throw down the Rosinante blocker to begin with. Out of these, what do I not care about having in my hand? Probably the Baby 5, to be honest. I think getting rid of Baby 5 is fine. Killer's great. How about another Bonnie search? Whoo, baby. So we're going to have to attack into these. And then the following turn, what we'll have is we'll have a Killer and a Rosinante. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We're, we're fine letting these go. Sweet. Uh, what do we not want here? I guess here is fine. Let's go here. Why not? Get another two cards out of hand or they lose two life. Perfect. We'll go here. Pass. And then what did they do the following turn? I don't know. I guess they could just swing all in and, and maybe do some damage here. 
It's not what we really care to see. Um. <laughs> Why do we have three kids? Oh, we don't need this many. It's too many kids. I guess we'll drop a 2K here. Sure. That's uh, funny. Um, I think we just kind of clear the board here, I suppose. They have so many of these on the field, it doesn't really matter. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to do this. And pass. We have two 2Ks in hand, and we have a Hody Jones the next turn. I'm okay getting rid of a uh, kid if they... I mean, they're not going to be able to get anything else out of our hand here, which is nice. So we'll go Hody Jones next turn. We'll rest their blocker and then whatever else they want to do here. They're also low on hand size. Sure. Weird. Uh, why don't we just do this? We'll go seven at face. They'll take it. What? It's random? Whoa, what the heck? What is that card? Okay. Uh, sure. Go eight here. Ten? What the heck? All right. Well, I mean, I guess that worked out. They spent a lot of their time trying to get rid of my hand size, which I guess to their point, it did work. However, one of the things I noticed against going like against a Gecko Moria is that their hand size is also kind of low at times too. So uh, I think our board quality was much better than them dumping three 2Ks to get my hand down to four. So yeah, overall though, I think this is the right setup. You want to put some blockers on the field. You want to like narrow their hand size down a little bit. The banish was definitely something that causes people to panic a little and then they have to counter out so yeah the onami was really clutch being there on our second dawn being there on our second turn uh, swinging seven they had to get rid of two cards which was perfect for us let's go second uh, not because we want to take this away from them but because we want to be able to play our kid on curve so let's keep this and do our best <laughs> i guess usually though um I think Yamato will want to go first just to get like the first couple of hits in before Katakuri gets going. But this also helps being able to go second and then take their curve away. Uh, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure the uh, go fast Yamato, what they like to do if they want to go like first or second. Typically, I would imagine that they don't uh, want Katakuri to be able to drop 10 drop on them on curve. Let's put the killer down uh, and then hope that they don't have a Gadatsu. If they have a Gadatsu, so be it. Uh, we'll take this damage. It's fine. No trigger. We're going to swing seven and ask for two cards out of hand. This is what I love about the Onami is it, it has your opponent give you two cards on your second turn. I love that so much. They had their own Onami. Oh, they were trying to banish me, but that's not going to work. Because I have a blocker. <laughs> Against Katakuri, I'm actually okay taking all of my life. Yeah, I figured they had a Gadatsu. That's fine. The reason why is because it basically provides... Like, them... Them taking your life is fine because, like, their 10-drop then is less effective as a result. We'll grab the kid. We just go here. They'll have to attack into the Bonnie. They're going to give me another two. Wow. That's actually insane. Um, down to one card is actually crazy to me. I guess, I guess what we'll do is we'll just play down the blocker and then pass. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. That's so strange. Sure. Nope. 
I'll counter out of this one. Because I don't want to have to counter two of the Godatsu. Huh. I think it's I think it's fine to go ahead and do this now. Do we want to do it now? No. We don't want to do it right now. Let's see what they have. Are they going to dro like drop one more card? Please. We have to do the 5 because we have to um play the kid this turn and we want them to go down to three which they did worked out for us play out the killer we do this and we pass and then the following turn what we can do is we can go double attack banish on the onami it's the reason why i saved it because i want to be able to use it going into this next turn i think it's pretty effective if we can do that and see if they drew like anything at this point, right? If they get like a seven cost big mom, it doesn't matter. Like that doesn't matter. We have to do some math this next turn, of course. And girl math. What do we get rid of? You just drop this. I think it actually drop another. We drop one of these as well. fine Ooh, ooh! this is pretty good this is pretty good uh i'm gonna attack into this because i don't care i already got my ability off attack here Pair of Sparrow. We don't care. Let's attack here. Will they save it? They will not. Put one under here and let's pass. We have the Punk Gibson ready to go. We have a killer with a Dawn on it so we can draw. I think we've set up a really, really good fortress here. The only thing that I wish that I had differently uh, out of here is a Bonnie would be perfect. Bonnie would be so good right now. Them throwing the Sanji down is amazing to see because I can just rest it now. I'm going to rest it and I'm going to double attack Banish. Next turn is the turn. Uh, huh. I think we just do this. Whoo! Another Onami. Insanity. I just wanted to get the draw off. That's why I did it. And I figured the Punk Gibson would be better here. One card for all of this. No blocker. Boom. Alrighty. Uh, let's go Onami. Here. One, two, three, four. Double attack banish. Sweet. I think we go here, take care of this character. Yeah, that's fine. If they play Big Mom, we don't care. We At this point, it doesn't matter. Wow, they've gotten really unlucky. But honestly, Big Mom doesn't matter at this point. Like Big Mom pretty much seals the deal for us if they throw it down. And we'll pass. And this is how you fortress. Yeah, see, that's totally fine for us. Let's go five. Let's see what we get out of it. Interesting. Um, okay, we'll do this. One, two. Double attack banish. Uh, <laughs> the only downside here is if this is like a beige in life. Thirteen. What do they get? Yeah, they got this. Maybe they had this the entire time. I'm, I mean, maybe they didn't. I don't know. But yeah, this not running eight cost is really tough for them. I notice a lot of Katakuris don't run it nowadays. 
The seven cost doesn't really do much against you, especially if you're already at zero. This didn't do anything. It was a 10 dawn heal one for them. And then I banished two of their life again twice in the game. So yeah, this is how you play it. You just play it slow. You take all your life. If you can establish the kid, then perfect. Them dumping their hand early was a really good sign that I think the game was pretty much won. Once they started dropping like two cards a turn, I was like, okay, I think we got this. Just play it slow, play it smart. So yeah. Well, as you can see, the Fortress build is pretty strong. I'd say that overall it has a good matchup spread. I'd say that if you're looking for a Yamato build that is a little bit more thoughtful, not saying it's incredibly thoughtful, but it is a little bit more thoughtful than just the swing face, uh, double attack, go hard all the time. I think this build is a really good one for you to try out. I think that the eight cost Captain Kid is hard to answer for a lot of decks in the meta. Of course, if you're going against Sakazuki, we did get the ban notice that Sakazuki won't be part of the uh, Asian meta starting April 1st. I don't know if those apply to us in the uh, North American or in the Europe meta, but overall, if Sakazuki is in the meta, you might consider running the other version of Yamato, but if Sakazuki isn't in the meta, then I think this deck it's hard to answer. There's a lot of things that will struggle against the eight cost Captain Kid and 10 drop Doflamingo. So yeah, Sakazuki is definitely one that is going to be boogeyman against this version of the deck. But otherwise, I think it does really well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, next week, I will be posting probably a Reiju video because I think that deck looks like a lot of fun and I, I want to try it out. I see people playing the four drop and then they draw like three cards and I'm like, what's this insanity? But otherwise, uh, let me know what you guys want to see over the OPO6 meta. I really appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video.